Daniel needs your help. He needs help? Yes. All right. He left something in his office, uh -huh. and he asked me to get it. I told him I'd pick him up. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'll walk up. Awesome. Later, man. See ya. <gasps> <laughs> Uh, so, this is what we're doing for today. We're doing whiskey water. <laughs> so the question is, whiskey and water, is there a right way to do it? Is there a wrong way to do it? How do you do it to see, to get the maximum benefit? How there, do you add whiskey to water the right way? There is no right way. All right, good episode. <laughs> <laughs> There's no single right way. All that you're doing, this is just like age and price. Okay. It only changes things. It doesn't inherently make it better. Okay. It does change things. Everything you add changes things. Okay, so before we go further, mm -hmm. the study that came out, they got a lot of- The study that came out- What did that say? Were two non-whiskey drinkers. Okay. Who went to a bar and were hanging out in Scotland so, and all the locals kept saying, so, add water to your whiskey. And they were like, well, why would you do that? But we're scientists, we should study this. No, 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 if they're not whiskey drinkers, they're savages. They're savages. And what they picked was only three parts of the process of whiskey yeah. and only one primary chemical and the general consensus was and there's that way... it opens up some of the chemicals. And there was notes. a way to objectively measure or were they just tasting There was a saying... way to objectively measure the thing they were measuring but what every other scientist interviewed for the article said was well that was a pretty narrow experiment that doesn't really tell us that much. Sure. What are we testing? What's the experiment? What we, we decided doing? to go for some base whiskeys so that you can see that water affects not just fancy whiskey. Right. So we've got Evan Williams bourbon, we've got Patty Irish, and we've got Lafroy Gin. So pretty classic Scotch, Irish, and American bourbon. We've got ice and we've got still water. This is uh, mineral water, actually. Yeah. And I've also got a purified water. Here's the fir first things first. Unless you were drinking a cask strength whiskey, it was already watered down hmm. before they put it in the bottle. Yeah, they brought it down yeah. to a cask level. Cask strength uh, Lafroy is in the 50s. And cask strength basically means it comes, comes out of the barrel and that's the strength of the whiskey. Yeah. What they're usually doing is they're adding water to get the right kind of exactly. flavor. So everything we're about to do, the distiller has already done okay. and arrived at the idea that 43% alcohol is where this tastes best. Right. Or, what's the minimum alcohol content to still be able to call it whiskey? 40. 40. Guess what we're watering this down to. Um, or this is 43 actually, Patties is the 40. So the moment we start adding whiskey to, for example, the Patties, mm -hmm. or the Patty Irish whiskey, mm -hmm. Is it no longer whiskey? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went below forty percent. It's no longer whiskey. Okay. But so that's got... a normal thing in Scotland. You'll, you'll, and as a matter of fact, a lot of professional tasters will water whiskeys down to the thirty percent alcohol. Yeah. Before they start making value judgments. Fair enough. When you actually add water, what you're doing, when you only, and we're not talking temperature, we're just talking water. Okay. What you're doing is you're pushing some of the things that are non-water soluble to the surface, and that's the next thing that you drink. And so it, it should be more aggressive on the next sip, okay. not less. Now, that only happens if you have a higher quantity of chemicals in the whiskey that are non-water soluble. And the more oil content, the more that that happens. Okay, so I, the low oil whiskeys will have a more mild reaction to a few drops of water. Are we having people cringe at the simplistic terms we're using whenever we say chemicals? Yeah, probably, Okay, but deal with it. Now, uh, how many drops of water should you add to a whiskey? Enough. That's much. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you know how much? How do you know? Up? You just keep going until it became no good anymore. Okay. And now you know for future reference, that's where I liked that whiskey. I do this with every whiskey I drink. Right. Is I start with no water added, and then I wor add water until I don't like it anymore. Right. And then I make a mental note. Sure, and the number of people who want a definitive black and white binary right or wrong answer when it comes to whiskey. Sorry, wrong Here's video. the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, it's so subjective. So what, what you should be, this is without water. Okay. What you should be doing when you add water is letting the glass rest for a little while. Right. And so the water has time to fully interact. Because otherwise, it would be like, um, if you ever, uh, if you ever had an iced coffee and you add a dollop of cream, right. and then just start sipping it, yeah. guess what you're gonna get? All the cream from the top of the coffee, right? right. And what you want to do is be able to let it sit and mix. So you add water and you just kind of let it sit. We don't have time for that. Explain what Lafroig is typically like for those. Lafroig tin, slightly um, effervescent and sparkly with pepper notes, a lot of peat smoke, a little campfire on the nose, hint of iodine. But overall, if you're used to drinking peaty whiskeys, 
this is a pretty friendly experience. Well, peaty, smoky whiskey. If yep. you're not, this is gonna be a really aggressive experience. And I will tell you, adding water to Lafroy tin makes the experience dramatically more aggressive. All right. Can you pour a little more Evan Williams in there for me? All right, so when I add the first drops of water, what I'm adding is I'm taking a glass straw, and if you can see this, right? So, think that's how much water I'm adding. Okay. Bing. Now, if we were not sat, no, look, look, oh, if you can see that, you can actually see in the glass, the oily residue kind of spiral outwards. Interesting. And, it, oh, like it's mixing. Um, okay, already, the nose just became more wood note than peat. Mm -hmm. It became really oaky and darker. It got much darker really fast. We let it sit a little bit. Try that again. I went to this one. It became, uh, it's like we turned uh, up the contrast in the whiskey and all the notes went round and dark. The back end is, is more intense for me. It was almost a yeah. bitterness there. Mm. Yeah, but the front end is smoother. Right. That's pretty magnificent. Let's try it again. Before we started doing this, I went to the Whiskey Tribe Facebook page and I told them we we're about to do a water episode. These are the questions that came in. Try that again after you ask one, because that's four times the amount of water. Keith Clark Hoyos. Is there a whiskey which you would never add water? No. I think it's, well, okay, let's put it this way. Um, there are whiskeys that I don't ever add water to because I prefer them without water. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the first time I'm drinking a whiskey, I always go through the water process to find the sweet spot. What do you think about that? No, it's not. Changed again, it right? It did change, yeah. Now it's got some lemon notes. And, and for context, this isn't, it doesn't make it a completely different whiskey. And it's still obviously Lafroy. It tank. makes it a twinge, a variation. Brian C. Idix, Idox. So basically, if he had water in the mm -hmm. glass and he poured whiskey in, would ah. that be different than having whiskey in the glass and put some water in? No, but the controlled quantity, yeah. that's the one you want to add second. Jason Cooper, how much shaking or stirring after you add water will change it? Letting it rest is better because when you shake it and stir it, you're, you're accelerating evaporation of the alcohol. Letting it sit, even with a lid on it, would be better because yeah. you don't get any alcohol evaporation, but you do let the water coalesce. Now, this is about half water now. Oh, that's getting really watered down. Yeah, that didn't taste good. No. That's... Okay, let's move to the Irish. Yeah. Patty Irish whiskey, 40% uh, already. Uh, that's already so mild that I'm hoping adding some drops of water will crack some things open. Sweet and a little biscuity, a yeah. little bit of honey. Now keep in mind, same amount of water every time. I'm doing the same process, one, then four, then half water. Sure. Keep in mind, my version of what happens to older whiskeys and water is, imagine you have a stone and it's jagged and you throw it in a river and you come back a hundred years later and it's a skipping stone. Yeah. That's what time does to whiskey in a barrel. It tends to, not in new barrels, it gets more and more oaky, but in used barrels, it tends to just rub off all the rough edges hmm. and just smooth everything out. Now when you add water and you're, you're moving things around in there again, it's like taking that skipping stone and cracking it in half with a hammer. You still have smooth outside edges, but now you've reintroduced a jagged edge. Hmm. And you don't lose all the smooth notes, but you do reintroduce some new ones. Chris Griep, purification of the water does it make a difference. It, you, it works just as, as logically as you think it would. Depending on how much water you're adding into something, that actually made it more interesting, it didn't did. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and to your point, it's uh, there is that sharp edge now. So, uh, but keep in mind, depending on the percentage of what you're adding, it's really important. So if you're adding, uh, if you have a dish the size of this table and you're adding a pinch of black pepper, it doesn't matter where the pepper came from, how it was stored, is it fresh ground? No one gives a shit, all right? If it's a peppercorn encrusted steak, it better be good pepper. So if you're doing drops of water in this quantity, right. the kind of water you use is not gonna make a massive difference unless you're using tap water which has chlorine in it. Right. Tap water can really screw with your whiskey flavors. They'll sell like bottles of mineral water made specifically for adding to whiskey. Mm -hmm. And in the Whiskey Vault, our other channel, we've done some A-B comparisons. You can't really tell. It's, it's like you can kind of imagine it if you try really hard, but, but it's, if, it's hard to objectively say, oh yes, this is If no idea. one told you and you drank the two whiskeys side by side, you would not discern there was a difference. Yeah. Just so you know, that made that budget Irish whiskey kind of come alive a little bit. All right. It went back around the curve. That's four times and drops of water. It's starting to get diluted. It's starting to get diluted. I'm not even going to do the half water thing because it's already getting boring. While you pour the bourbon, why do, so, why do some people add so much water to their whiskey? Like the guy with Glenn Lidditt. He talks about dropping it down to 30%. Mm -hmm. Why so low? 
personal preference, yeah. It's personal preference, but here's another thing. Um, what you're going for in studying something is the patterns you recognize. Mm -hmm. And so if you have trained yourself to be able to understand something at a certain alcohol content, right. you're gonna want everything to be at that level so that you can compare it to previous things. Otherwise, it's an unfair comparison. And so if you're a professional taster and you spend all day comparing things, it's better for you, health-wise, if it's at 30%, and it eliminates some of the high alcohol burn, right. and so you get the subtle things behind it. And so it's just all about pattern recognition. Try this, this is uh, Evan Williams with nothing in it. Cameron Mount, where do you get those glass straws? I just went on Amazon and bought glass straws. Let's search for glass straws. That's really smooth already. Cherry and honey and caramel. If you just took a big drink of water, your mouth is still full of water. Mm -hmm. When you pour your whiskey into it, you've now just watered it down a little bit. Yeah. It's not just saliva. All, all right. right, one drop of water. We see what happens. Well, you can already see. I mean, you can see the, it's almost like spider webs dissolving. Yeah, it webs out and gets diluted and ribbed and then it just kind of mixes in with it. Yeah, once it's mixed in, that's that resting thing. Terry Bradford, is there a percentage you try to add depending on alcohol content or on the oil present? I have experimented a little bit, not happy with it yet. Just add water until it tastes right. And the only notes you need to keep are the notes of what you like with this bottle. Right. Uh, now, because the exception to that rule is if you are doing barrel testing. And so if I want to do a fair comparison of how a barrel is aging, and I've got two barrels or three barrels in front of me, mm -hmm. I want to be sampling what they all taste like at the same proof, unless we're doing a single barrel release, and then I'm just going for which of these barrels taste the best. Sure. Jonathan Damasi, I've heard that you shouldn't add water to bullet. So no. there's a lot of people who have all kinds of opinions whenever it comes to their way yeah. of drinking whiskey being the right way. There's not a wrong way to drink it. What's the rule? I'm gonna, have? best whiskey is the whiskey you like, and the right way to drink it is the way you want to drink it. Yeah. So That's the only fair rule. Try that first, because I want you to try that, and then we'll talk water? temperature. Yeah. One drop of water, it became much more interesting. Because we were talking early in this video about no oils the oils and the chemicals coming up to the top. What happens when you've consumed all yeah, that stuff on the top? Yeah, the top is gone, does that mean the rest is just diluted? Yeah. Okay. And and uh, that's why I don't actually pour large quantities of whiskey whenever I'm drinking. I will always pour about this much and finish it, refill, finish it, refill, finish it, because I always want control of the experience. Uh, I don't want evaporation to change everything too fast. Yeah. I don't want water to change everything too fast. Let's add three more things of water to get to that same quantity. Steven Daniel Eldridge. Should the proper method for adding water to whiskey be that you add water, place a top on your Glencairn, mm. and let it sit for a few minutes and then come back to the whiskey? If Draw you want to be out, fair. Be really, really thorough. Yes. I'm a little bit too impatient. To <laughs> yeah, <he is. laughs> But yeah, if you want to um, go moment by moment, second by second, drop by drop, to that get bourbon got that, boring. that level of precision, then get your spreadsheet out and have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've decided is of the three we chose, Lefroy 10 tastes best with no water in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, Patty and Evan Williams both taste good with one half straw add of water. Now let's talk temperature. You have a temperature question in there? Yeah, is there a right temperature for <laughs> How about that? Good question. So yeah, that's a great question. All Thanks, right. Rex. Yeah, for no that problem. Setup. Yeah, no problem. So uh, your mouth is uh, does not interpret chemicals evenly at every temperature. Are you keeping, certain? Hold on. Shut those up. are all the watered down ones. You're keeping all the whiskeys away from me. Uh, you're on the savage list now. Like when something's really heat <laughs> savage. <laughs> all you need to know is there's no best temperature for whiskey. There's just at different temperatures, you taste different things. Sure. Now you get the fairest representation of whiskey at roughly room to cellar temperature. So I think we learned a lot about adding water and temperature. And you were just on vacation. <laughs> How did I that... was, I even made a friend. Oh, you did? I did a tortoise. Okay, so. A 25 year old tortoise. I wanted to ease you back into the land of the living. Oh, okay. After your vacation. After I was gone for because two and a half days. in most of our episodes at this point, I put Daniel through some horrific trial. But you know, I came back from vacation, you're trying to take it easy, is that what you're saying? No, I'm easing you back in. What's your definition of easing me back in? So I'm not doing anything to you. Oh, okay. Um, let's just toast out the channel. With not watered down whiskey. I'm feeling very toasty. What's, uh, what I, felt, I felt the weird need to knock. <laughs> <laughs> I have no reason for that. What, sh what should we toast out with? We should toast out with uh, something good. Something good. Huh. That's, that's, <laughs> 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 hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, so, what's the, so give, give me a damn whistle. I don't have a single, which one? There's no. So. I'm the only one with a key other than. So do, hold on, Daniel, remember when you were going on vacation? Yeah. And I was like, so what about the biscuit shoot? I mean, that's really late in the week. I'm gonna have to be up all night. And what did what did you say? I said, tough shit. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm going on vacation, yeah, yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you want a vacation, huh, Daniel? Are you ready? Alright, 